Welcome to another OnShape tutorial looking at the D Bluetooth speaker block models. In this tutorial we're going to look at the small oval speaker. This is probably a medium difficulty tutorial to follow. So if you haven't done one of the easy ones you may want to go back and do the cube speaker or the cylinder speaker. This tutorial is assuming that you've already set up your OnShape account and loaded the software. So I'm going to go to create and document and I'm going to call it small oval speaker. Click on OK and the software will take us into the design area. So just to remind you, uh, this is cloud-based software, so everything that you do save to the cloud. You don't need to remember to save things. Once you've created a document, it automatically updates as you go through. So here we have the design area, we've got the work planes and we have uh, a, a blank space to draw on. So let's start creating our shape. We're going to draw this on the front work plane. So we're going to hover the mouse over the front work plane until it's the edges are highlighted in orange. Right click, left click on new sketch. And I can either then right click and select view normal to sketch plane or I can press the N key on the keyboard for normal two. And then I'm going to start drawing. I'm going to start with the center point circle. Uh, if that's not displayed, I can click on the little arrow and choose from the different options, but I want the center point circle option. I'm going to move the mouse pointer so it lines up with the origin. You'll see why later on. And just come over to the left so you can see that uh, there's a little indicator to the bottom right of the cursor showing that this is horizontal. And also there's a dotted orange line showing that I'm in line with the edge of the top work plane. I'm going to left click once to place the center of the circle and then move the mouse out and left click again so that I've drawn the circle. I use the dimension tool now to left click on the circle and give that a size which I want to be at 100 so I'm just typing that in on the keyboard and I also want to dimension from the origin to the center of the circle and I want that to be 35 millimeters so three, five on the keyboard, hit enter and it moves. Now the circle goes over the edge of this work plane, that doesn't matter. Uh, we can trim that off in a moment. I'm now going to use the line tool. Now the line tool um, works in two different ways on, on shape. If I left click and then left click and then left click and then left click, I can keep doing uh, a multi line. Uh, I can press escape to end the multi line. I just delete that because we don't need it. If on the other hand I use the line tool and I hold the left mouse button down, so left click and hold and then move across and then release the left mouse button, it just draws a single line. So I'm going to press Ctrl and Z on my Windows keyboard. If you're using a Mac, use Command and Z to undo what you've just done. Or you can click on the undo icon over here. So let's select the line tool. I'm going to hover over the origin uh, of the circle, the center of the circle, and go up until I click on the edge of the circle. So once I've got the edge of the circle highlighted, I've got a dotted line showing that I'm above the center of the circle. The edge of the circle has gone orange to show that I'm located on that as well. And I'm just going to click and hold and drag a line until it lines up with the origin and the edge of the right work plane, and then let go. I'm now going to copy that line down to the bottom by mirroring it. So this is the reason why it was important that we lined up with the origin and the edge of the top plane. So I'm going to pick the mirror tool. I'm going to select the mirror line, which is going to be the edge of the top work plane. And you can see that's gone yellow to show that that's what's selected. And then I'm going to select the line that I've just drawn. And you can see that it appears down here. I'm now going to use the trim tool to trim off the bit of the circle that I don't need, which is the inside part. So just left click on that and it disappears and I've just got half of the small oval that I want. So now I'm going to mirror the two horizontal lines and the half a circle over onto this side. So again, use the mirror tool. This time the mirror line is going to be the edge of the right pl work plane. And I'm going to select the top line, the semicircle, and the bottom line and hopefully you notice that it's shaded that in gray now so it shows that it's a valid sketch i'm just going to hold the right mouse button down slightly so you can see where we are 
and then I'll press uh, the N key to go back. So for this profile, this is going to be the outer part of the casing. So we need to give this material a bit of thickness. So I'm going to turn the mirror tool off. And I'm going to select the, the contour tool or the offset tool. To me, this looks a bit like Mr. Greedy from the Mr. Men. I'm going to left click to select that. And then I'm going to select all of the lines that create the profile of the shape I've already drawn. Now, I guess I could have done this before mirroring and it would have had the same effect, but I did it this way around. I'm now going to left click on the arrow and drag that on the inside because I want the offset to be on the inside of the existing line. Once I've done that, I'm going to press the return key and then enter in the dimension of six millimeters and hit return or enter again. And I've now got the profile. Right click just to right. Uh, click and hold if you like just to turn that around so that we can see what's going on in 3d so I'm now going to click on the extrude tool and it defaults to 25 millimeters I want this to be 33 millimeters so I'm going to click on the number and just type in 33 and hit enter and you can see that it's come in front of the front work plane I want this to be symmetrical about the front work plane uh, because I want to mirror a feature in a moment so I'm going to click the symmetric tick box and you'll see that it's jumped back so now instead of being 33 millimeters ahead of the front work plane it's going to be 16 and a half in front and 16 and a half behind left click on the tick uh, to confirm that hold the mouse button down just spin it around slightly I'm now going to move the mouse pointer onto that front face so both the outside edge and the inside edge are highlighted I'm going to right click and I'm going to select new sketch this time I'm going to press the N key for normal 2 on the keyboard so that it spins round and I'm facing that edge. Now I want to uh, complete the end plate of this and to do that I'm going to use this tool here, the Use Project or Convert tool. So I'm going to convert the outside profile to a sketch. So left click on there left click on the first line and sometimes it takes two clicks to get the first line selected you can see that it's slightly thicker black line now do the same on the bottom edge the right arc and the top straight so all of those parts are selected so we've got the first part of the sketch now with this particular speaker um, it's asymmetric it's not symmetrical in the positioning of the speakers uh, but there are holes opposite the speaker holes to help with the sound quality so I'm going to put those on this face um, and they'll be changed later on in another process so let's add the circles for those two holes so center circle tool we've already got centers of these arcs highlighted so I'm going to line it up with that center left click come out left click and do the same on the other side left click come out a little way and left click both of these are going to be the same size so I'm going to use the equals tool here to um, make sure that the two of them uh, are the same if that doesn't appear if you're on a slightly smaller screen uh, you may find that the constraints are hidden under a drop down menu so you can left click on an arrow probably on the coincident constraint um, Mine's all viewed, so I'm going to click on equals. Don't confuse it with the parallel tool. And if I left click on the first circle and left click on the second circle, you see that they change so that they're both the same size. And I'm now going to dimension them. The joy of this is I can dimension both of them uh, with one dimension. And I'm going to change that to 12 millimeters. So type in 12 on the keyboard and hit enter. But it also means if I want to change those sizes, if I decided perhaps that they uh, should have been 16 millimeters or 25 millimeters, I can just change one dimension and they'll both change. Okay, let's take that back to 12. So type in 12, hit return. So I now have uh, my profile for that sketch. So I'm now going to extrude that. So I'm going to click on the extrude tool. And you can see it's defaulted to 25. I want that to be six millimeters. So click on the number, type in six, hit enter, and we've got the preview. Left click to confirm. I'm now going to mirror that feature. So I'll spin it around so that we can see what's happening. We can see we've got a, a, a hollow shape with uh, one end on. I'm going to use the mirror tool and I'm going to click on the arrow here 
and change it from part mirror to feature mirror and the feature to mirror is going to be extrude 2 and because we uh, extruded that symmetrically about the front work plane the front work plane can be the mirror plane so I'm going to left click to select the mirror plane and left click on the front and you can see that it's added that onto the back surface and I can left click to confirm that so just holding the right mouse button down I can spin that around to see it so as I said this design is asymmetric so it has a speaker pointing out the front and a speaker pointing out the rear. So I'm going to right click on the front face and select new sketch. Press N to go normal to the sketch plane, the surface. And I'm going to use the center point circle again to create my sketch. I'm going to hover by the edge of the circle that's already there and then come to the middle. And just to the bottom right of the cursor, you can see there's a little icon appeared with a circle inside a circle. So it means I'm concentric to the circle that's highlighted in orange. So I'm going to left click, come out, left click again, and then use the dimension tool to change the size of that. Now the size I actually want is 67. So I'm going to type in 67, press enter, and then I'm going to extrude remove. So I'll just again use the right mouse button uh, to spin it around. It's defaulted to wanting to add material. So it says add here. I'm going to left click on remove and it then changes direction. And we know that the wall is six millimeters thick. So let's just change that to six and hit enter. And then left click and we can see that that's gone in six millimeters through the thickness of that front face. We need to do the same on the back. So as I spin it around, uh, we can sort of twiddle it around left and right and we can see that there's um, a full face on this side but there's an opening on this side so this speaker is going to go on the, the left as we're viewing it again so just do what we did before right click on the surface left click on new sketch press n to go normal to that surface use the center circle tool line it up so it's concentric with the hole that's already there left click to place the center come out left click to place the circumference Use the dimension tool, left click on the circumference, change that to 67 millimeters, hit return, extrude, and we want to remove and we want to make that six. And if I just spin that with the right mouse button held down again and confirm, we can see that's gone through. So that's it. I'll right click and left click on isometric so that we can get an isometric drawing so you can see that we've got the the hole behind the speaker that's facing towards the back uh, which helps to improve the sound and we've got the hole for the speaker this way and there's a, a hole going in the other direction so that's the speaker drawn let's just create a quick drawing of that so that we could print it and then trace it to try some different renders of different materials so we'll click on the plus sign bottom left and left click on create drawing we we'll use the custom template, left click on ISO, we can keep the other settings as they are, left click on OK, and it will create the, the drawing for us. Uh, we're already in the part studio, we've got no assemblies, left click on the part, and it will try and do a quick preview. We don't want it in orthographic, so left click on view orientation and change it to isometric. That's the third size, that's a bit small. Uh, let's see if we can fit one to one in so left click on one to one and that will just about fit on the page to allow us to print it off so left click to place it and then we can print that off we can trace it and we can have a go at doing some renders thank you for watching this tutorial hope you found it nice and easy i'll be back with another tutorial soon